Hi everyone and welcome to this video. As you may notice, this is like a whole new setup with new microphone, lightings and colors. Uh, a lot of things are going to change in the background, so stay tuned on the channel to see how things are going to evolve. Anyway, today I wanted to talk to you about a great bug bounty story that I have. I was collaborating as usual with my friend Snorlax and one night we were testing uh, this new application of our target. The thing that really bothered me about this application is that it was so hard to create a new application. Account. So what I did is I asked Norlax to give me access to one of his accounts that he managed to create and basically he just gave me the access to a password reset link and at the moment he gave me that link I knew that we could hack this feature. In this video, we're going to talk about a technique called the sandwich attack and how we managed to create a great bounty out of it. Actually, I also presented this vulnerability at the HacktivityCon 2022 in Las Vegas and on the French channel underscore. I'm going to give you the link in the description for those who are interested. Let's start from the beginning. As you may know, a password reset feature is a security measure that helps a user reset their password if they forget it. The process usually involves sending an email to the user containing a link. The link also has a token to recognize which user is clicking on the link. And so when the user click the link, they are redirected to a new page and they can enter the password. And the token part needs to be unique for every user and therefore also unguessable. However, what if it is possible as an attacker to generate the token back in order to access the password reset of our victim. The link that Snorlax gave me contained a special token that we usually not see. The token was a UID. While UID are really common and also sometimes for password reset features, this one was really particular. A UID is a unique identifier used to recognize a certain entity. Just like every person has a social security number, every entity has a UID. UIDs are usually used to identify things such as computers, files or database records. One common use of UIDs is to actually give a primary key to a U One common use of a UID is to actually identify a user in a database. There are five versions of UIDs, each with their own generation methods. The most common ones are V1 and V4. V1 is generated through the use of timestamps and MAC address while version 4 use random numbers. So let's understand how a UID is generated. Here is a UID. In order to recognize the version, we simply need to identify the third chunk of the string and then the first number will be the version. The token that Snorlax gave me had the version set to 1. So as I said, version 1 used timestamps and MAC addresses to generate the UID. This is what triggered me. The token uses a certain point in time to generate the unique identifier and we can actually retrieve the timestamp from the generated ID. To do so, we need to actually dive more into how a UID v1 is constructed. There is actually six parts, the high, the mid, the low, the version, the clock and the MAC address. What is interesting is that the clock and the MAC address is actually tied to a certain machine. This means that if a single machine generates two tokens, this path will remain the same. So if we were to guess the rest of the token, it leaves us to the high, the mid and the low. So what are those values? If we put the high, the mid and the low together, they actually form an hexadecimal value. When converting this exa value to decimal, it actually gives us a timestamp in the Julian calendar. Why the Julian calendar? I really don't know. It's just super weird, but yeah, it gave us the same timestamp in the Julian calendar. With the help of some really complex mathematics, uh, we can just subtract the offset between the Julian calendar and the Gregorian calendar, the one that we use every day, and then you divide by 1000 and you actually get a Unix timestamp. From Unix time step, we can directly get the date. Okay, that was actually super easy. So now that we understand how a UID v1 works, how can we actually get the reset token of a victim as an attacker? 
So the interesting thing is that when I was scrolling on the internet, I actually found a blog post called How Secure Are Your Ideas? wrote by Verse Sprite's team. In the article, they talk about the technique called the sandwich attack and how we can manage to brute force unique identifiers using it. So now here's the recipe to get a zero-click account takeover using the sandwich attack. To cook your sandwich attack as an attacker, you first need to send a password reset to your own account. And this will be the first layer of bread. Then we can, you can send a reset token to the victim account if you know their email address. And that will be the garniture of your sandwich, the tomato, the ham and everything. And then once again, you send another reset token to your account, so on the attacker account, and that will be the top layer of bread. So as you may see, the reset token of your victim is sandwiched and squeezed between your two tokens. That actually gives you a time range because you have two UIDs with a certain point in time and you can basically guess every IDs that are between those two. All you need to do is to generate a world list of all the UIDs in the time range. In short, you'll need to brute force all the possibilities between your first token and your last token. So when we were hacking with Snorlax, I actually called my brother and I really needed help to, <laughs> to create the script that will generate all the tokens back. He is a way better developer than me and uh, he wrote the script in Ruby in order to generate all the UIDs and to create this word list. I'm going to put the GitHub link in the description if you want to use the script. So basically, how do you use the tool? You give two UIDs, uh, the first one you received and then the last one. And the tool will basically print all the UIDs in between. In order to brute force the endpoint, we basically use fav, put the word list and run it against the API. In the scenario that we had with Snorlax, we basically had 100,000 possibilities to brute force across three days because a reset token lasted three days. So we started the script for the first time and voila, we had the reset token of our victim. After a few moments of brute forcing, we actually managed to get a zero-click account takeover. This issue was actually qualified as high and we were paid $5,000. Hmm, this is a tasty burger. That's super awesome. I, I really like this attack. Something that you really need to be aware of when reporting this vulnerability is that it's possible that many different machines generate your UID. For instance, if you target using a Kubernetes cluster with uh, different machines, different pods generating the token, there will be a different clock and MAC address. So for each token in your world list, you will actually need to put all the variation of clock and MAC address that you perceive. And so from our test, we generated a couple of reset tokens and from the UIDs that we managed to extract. So basically from 100,000 possibilities, we had 600,000 possibilities. This is really doable when uh, the API do not have any rate limiting and uh, when the token lasts for three days. So how do you mitigate this vulnerability? It's quite easy. You just need to use a generation methods for your reset token that has way more entropy. You can use libraries that use cryptographic Cryptographic. Cryptographic. Crypto. That's my French accent. <laughs> the best thing will be to use libraries using cryptographic function. And if you want to add another layer on top of that, uh, you can run it through a uh, SHA-256 uh, to be pretty sure, you know. <laughs> I love this vulnerability so much that I actually turned it into a CTF challenge for the Stack event in 2021. The Stack is a French cybersecurity event uh, that is run every year in Bordeaux. And in 2021, the CTF challenge was actually taking place in the Palais Rouen, which is impressive. <laughs> this was like actually an amazing and magnificent location. I really wanted to challenge the French teams uh, to find this vulnerability back and actually three teams managed to flag this CTF. What was 
really funny about the CTF is that it's also really network dependent uh, for the time of your brute force and because the Wi-Fi uh, was pretty bad in 2021 um, from 15 minutes of brute forcing that I actually anticipated uh, some teams that brute force one for one hour straight so kudos for everyone that managed this CTF and uh, sorry for the latency so now that you know uh, what is a sandwich attack I hope that you will manage to find some vulnerabilities and if you do just you know, DM me, at me on Twitter, and uh, do not hesitate to subscribe on the video to see more videos. I am stuck. And when Lupin asked me if I could, you, you know, jump in and finish off this video, I, I was planning to be in my studio, but then I ended up having a vacation, a classic Scandinavian vacation where it what? sun, sun and strawberries and, you know, day drinking and all that stuff. I just want to wish you a great, great, great summer, and I hope you really enjoyed this video. Stay curious.